Hey there, I'm Mike. This is my refrigeration system. I've done this video like 15 times. I never get beyond a few minutes. So um, hopefully this one's successful. I'm going to ramble a little bit, but hopefully I'm able to explain how refrigeration works in a few minutes. Um, I don't have any graphics. I don't have any uh, pictures. I don't have any diagrams. Just me rambling, okay? <clears throat> right now the thing's not running. Uh, I'm going to uh, get it going here in a couple of minutes. But uh, first I want to uh, explain a few basic principles, okay? Um, I'm going to turn the camera away from my face here pretty soon because this feels kind of weird. Um, but I built this thing, so I figured I ought to be able to actually try to explain it. And um, it's, it's not an easy task to expl explain refrigeration. Um, it's beautiful. It's actually really quite simple once you, once you grasp it. But everybody has refrigerators in their homes and air conditioners and stuff, and very few people seem to understand how they work. They're just cold machines, you know. Um, but... Um, Anyway, if I'm successful and you're actually able to uh, withstand my, my long ramblings and stuff, I'll uh, help you out a little bit with that. So, and if you understand how this stuff works well, you can just watch some of my other videos too because they get a little more in depth. Um, so, refrigeration. What we have here is essentially just a refrigerator. This box, insulated box, is going to get refrigerated. Right now it's uh, pretty much at about uh, 68, 70 degrees. Um, Compressor does the work. Came out of an air conditioner. Okay, um, just a pump essentially. Pumps vapor. Um, then we have this condenser. It's an important component here. This thing's filled full of water, and this copper tubing runs down through that that water, and uh, that copper tubing is going to uh, discharge heat. It's going to be warmer than the water inside. Gonna discharge that heat. It's going to actually get pumped back to this bucket. Um, in addition to that. We have, after the condenser, we have this valve. It's my throttling valve. Okay. It's my refrigerant control. It actually uh, controls, pretty much controls the temperature of these coils here. Okay. So, it's one long circuit. It's one loop. It just keeps recycling this refrigerant over and over again. I'll explain in a minute what refrigerant is. Um, in order to get heat to move, and that's what heat is, it's just... Uh, um, it's energy in transition, right? Okay. So, grab a hold of a hot frying pan. Obviously, that's heat moving. It's heat moving right in your bloody hand. It hurts. You had, uh, uh, grab a hold of some ice. Again, heat moving, but it's moving out of your hand. Okay. So that's what heat is. Heat heat moves around. Okay. And when you think of heat, you don't you know automatically think of a refrigerator or a refrigerated space or even an ice cube. But there's still plenty of heat in an ice cube or a refrigerated cabinet. Um, and if you want to get that heat out, you need to make something colder than the, that space, right? And uh, if you want to get rid of that heat, you know, that waste heat, you just want to discharge it, dump it outside. Well, say it's an air conditioner, same principle as a refrigerator. You want to get rid of that heat. You're going to have to um, to raise the temperature of that substance, um, that refrigerant in this case. It's their, our heat carrying substance. You're gonna have to raise the temperature of that higher than the you know outside environment or in the case of a refrigerator, higher than the temperature of your kitchen in order to get that energy out of that refrigerant so it can go back and keep doing its job. Once it gets into that refrigerated space, you need to make it colder than that space so it absorbs heat out of the space and lowers the temperature of the space. So, um, you can kind of think of it as um, a sponge. Okay, the, the sponge, the refrigerant is a sponge okay, that you, you soak up water with. And let's say you spilled some water on the floor, and uh, you want to get it, put it in a bucket uh, on the counter. Okay, so you'd reach down, you'd, you'd soak that 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 sponge up full of water. You'd lift it up to the bucket, you'd wring it out. Okay, you wring it out so it's good and dry. It's ready to receive more water. So you reach down to the floor, put it in the puddle, pull up some more water till it's saturated. Squeeze it into the bucket again. Right. Well. A vapor compression system, which is what a refrigerator is, it, it compresses vapor. Okay? It's the same thing, and um, the, the the refrigerant, as I said, is kind of like the sponge. Okay, so what you're trying to do is to to change the conditions that the the, the refrigerant exists in. So at some points in the system, it gets very cold and absorbs heat, and at other points in the system, it gets very hot and it rejects heat. And um, the, the two components in the system that, that dictate that are really um, the compressor on one side and the, uh, the refrigerant control, that little valve I showed you on the other side. Now, 
Um, something you have to understand is that different substances, different liquids, gases, stuff, they, um, well, let's start with just liquids. Uh, water. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Well, that's at atmospheric pressure. There's a little asterisk down there at the bottom whenever you read that somewhere. It's at, at atmospheric pressure. Because if you lower the pressure, it actually lowers the boiling point. Uh, if you ever baked anything, you know there's special instructions for high altitude. Um, and that's because the, the, the baking temperature, the time, is a, is a little bit different for, uh, for higher altitude. So, conversely, if you were to raise the pressure, which doesn't really exist too many places on the planet, it actually raises the boiling point, and it's subtle, it's really small. But, um, say in like a steam engine or something like that, the pressure might be very, very high, so the boiling point might be 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very, it seems very unusual. Conversely, if you want to uh, uh, lower the pressure very, very low, you can get water to boil at room temperature. And, uh, and when that water boils, it absorbs a lot of heat. And uh, a lot more heat than whenever you just raise the temperature of it. Because when it boils, it boils at pretty much constant temperature. But I'm not going to get into that too much. Um, there's other substances that will boil at other pressures. Uh, one of those is propane. This is a bottle of propane. It was. It's actually empty right now. But uh, anyway, you get the idea. Um, little Coleman bottles, little... Ace Hardware propane bottle. I actually just use this to transfer propane from a uh, uh, barbecue tank into my system. Uh, but that is my refrigerant. You might be familiar with uh, Freon. Freon was a trade name for a, uh, a refrigerant back in the 1930s. A very, very successful refrigerant. Um, that stuff was fantastic. Except it destroyed the ozone layer. Um, or almost did. Uh, I'm starting to come back now. But, uh, but R12 Freon isn't, isn't coming back. Um, so anyway, this stuff, propane, um, I don't burn it. It gets circulated through the system. It's recycled the whole time. You can just circulate it a million, million, million times. Um, that stuff um, has a boiling point of about negative 44 degrees Fahrenheit at, at atmospheric pressure. And um, you realize, you know that it gets really cold if you've ever uh, used a tank of this stuff for a long period of time and relieved a lot of the pressure, burned off most of it, I presume. Um, tank will cool down. And that's because you're relieving pressure off of the, the liquid that's inside, and it's actually causing it to, to, uh, to boil, to replace that vapor. Um, if you shut the valve off um, and stop relieving the pressure and set it down for a while, eventually the, um, the refrigerant is going to continue to boil, and it's going to raise the pressure back up to the point where uh, um, uh, the, what we say is the vapor pressure equals the static pressure, at which point boiling stops. Um, which is probably about the time that the whole tank warms up back to room temperature. Um, so, anyway. So what we do here with this refrigerant, this propane, is um, we circulate it throughout the system. Okay? Compressor, to the condenser, to the throttling valve, to the uh, evaporator, and then back to the compressor. Now, as I said, the boiling point changes depending on the pressure. So. Uh, I have a little chart here, and uh, just for example, um, let's say about room temperature, that propane bottle, the pressure inside, let's say about 70 degrees. The pressure inside is about 110 pounds per square inch, okay? If we lower the pressure, say on down to 30 psi, the temperature is 8 degrees. Okay, it's actually going to uh, to absorb a lot of heat because now it's boiling at a very, very low temperature relative to what we're used to, and it's going to absorb a lot of heat. Oh, on the other hand, if you were to raise the pressure, starting from a, a lower point in temperature, on up to, say, 200 pounds per square inch, it's going to raise the temperature up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. That's exactly what this system does here. This system draws vapor out of the evaporator, the cooling coils, because we want to make those coils colder than the box so they absorb heat, pulls vapor into the compressor, where it squeezes that, that vapor at, say, 30 pounds per square inch, squeezes that vapor and pushes it through a discharge line, a small quarter inch line on the back side here, that goes on up and into the condenser. Now that compressor it's not all dissimilar to like an air compressor. If you've ever seen an air compressor before, 
There's a piston inside here. As you operate the crank, it draws vapor in through a valve, and then when it compresses it, pushes it out the other valve, and usually compresses it in a tank. What this system does is essentially the same thing, except instead of just sucking and compressing air, you're sucking and compressing uh, vapor, propane, gaseous propane. So maybe 30 pounds per square inch on what we call the low side, and then it discharges it at a much higher pressure, maybe 150 psi. All right. Now, in that transition, in that change, there's only vapor going through here, only gas, no liquid. In that change, this vapor is uh, on the low side, has a low boiling point. What did I say? Maybe 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. On the high side, 150 pounds might have a, a, a boiling point of about 95 degrees. Now you have to understand that the boiling point and the condensation point are about the same thing. Two sides of the same coin. Okay. So for instance, if you were to boil some water uh, at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, atmospheric pressure, um, the vapor that comes off, okay, if uh, you were then to expose it to, say, a metal plate or uh, um, even just some cooling air blowing, blowing across it, um, and you were to lower the temperature of that, that, that vapor, you could actually get it to condense out. And, uh, and that can occur at the same temperature. In this system, it's highly controlled, so uh, the, uh, the boiling point that this is pushed up to, this, this, this high pressure line coming out of the compressor, um, is, say, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, let's say my cooling water in here is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So this, this line carrying this high pressure vapor, hot vapor, gets uh, cooled down. And uh, uh, as it gets cooled down, um, the uh, vapor will start to condense the same way that a, a cold glass of uh, iced tea will, you know, sweat in, in, in the summertime. Um, you have condensation that's, that's occurring, and as it's condensing inside the line, inside the copper tubing, um, it's discharging heat to the water, which flows on back to this bucket. So, uh, high pressure vapor, hot vapor goes in, and a slightly lower temperature liquid comes out. You can actually see it in the sight glass once I get it fired up. Um, disregards the filter and some valving and there's a tank over there. It has nothing to do with the process really, it just makes things a little more convenient. Flows into this line and heads towards the evaporator. Before it gets there, it has to go through my little valve. Now remember, it's about 150 PSI. What this valve does is it restricts the flow of that liquid refrigerant going through that valve. And I can change how or open or closed it is by controlling that there. Now what happens across that valve is a pressure drop. Just like putting your finger over a water hose, it uh, creates a, uh, a pressure differential and you end up actually shooting a large amount of water across, across the room. So you can actually spray that water out. Well, what this does is it restricts the flow um, and the, uh, the, pressure, the pressure actually drops okay, on the other side of this. So it, it backs up, it's very high pressure behind it. I'll try to point outside the box so you can't see. Very high pressure behind it and very low pressure on the other side. And what comes through there is um, mostly liquid. Mostly. And because the pressure drops across that valve, some of the liquid actually has to boil. Okay? Because the temperature of the liquid might be, well, let's say it's 75 or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You know? Might be close to our water temperature. Well, in order for it to actually do some effective cooling in this box, the, uh, the temperature of the liquid refrigerant itself, the propane, actually has to drop before it can do any cooling. And so a portion of it just flashes, right? It uh, starts to vaporize away. And what that does is it actually pulls, pulls heat out of the, the remainder of the low pressure liquid refrigerant. Um, and uh, those, those gases that are formed, that little bit of flash gas, uh, actually can rise up through this column and get sucked back through this line back to the compressor. The remainder of it, the remainder of that liquid is now at low pressure and because the boiling point is actually at a lower temperature than the inside of the box right now the box is about 68 degrees uh, let's say it's about 8 degrees, the, the refrigerant was 8 degrees um, the, uh, it's going to absorb a lot of heat because you have a, a huge temperature difference between the inside of the box and the, the liquid inside the copper coils themselves. And when it does that, it boils.
and as it boils it forms vapor and that vapor bubbles up through these tubes goes back to that central column I mentioned and likewise also gets sucked back to the compressor and uh, of course as it's pulling that heat out the temperature inside the box gradually lowers and lowers and lowers until we get to the nice point where we we reached and we get to pull our beer out and drink our beer um, coming back to the compressor the whole process starts over again low pressure vapor is squeezed just like uh, wringing out the the sponge into the bucket okay um, and that that squeezing action whenever the temperature is low enough on the high side um, excuse me the temperature of the high pressure lick or high pressure vapor is higher than the water it squeezes that heat out into the the water okay and cools it down forms liquid goes back to the throttling valve pressure drops portion of the liquid actually flashes turns to vapor and comes back to the compressor the remainder of it boils away and absorbs heat out of the box that's essentially a refrigerator hopefully I didn't make it too uh, <laughs> didn't ramble too much so why don't I start the damn thing up because if you actually sat through this you're probably just waiting to me to shut the hell up and just turn it on fired up Now, this gauge right here dictates, or dictates, it, it tells me, responds to the pressure inside the evaporator coil. What I call the ebulator. Doesn't matter. Now, this other blue one up here pretty much shows the same pressure. It's just taken at a different point in the system. See, it's about 33 pounds and dropping. You can see the high side high pressure side, the point where the heat is discharged is well over 150 PSI, 160. The reason it's so high, I'll tell you here in a minute what the temperature is, because I was running this system earlier, so there's water still a little warm. Now, I can adjust the valve a little bit, open it or close it, which is going to dictate the pressure drop, and thus the boiling point inside this box here. Now, of course, you can't feel it on the video, but uh, there's already some cool air floating around in there. Now, I should have showed you this a little earlier, but see the air? Nope, you're not crazy. The uh, temperature did uh, jump a little bit. My uh, phone kind of froze and stopped the video, so. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to finish this up a little bit because um, I'm sick and tired of trying to do this all afternoon. Uh, a lot of starts and stops. But anyway, um, so we have an air temperature inside of about 46 right now. Um, if I had a little better insulated box, I'm going to get like a small dorm refrigerator or something, I think. Um, sealed up a little bit better. Uh, let me show you. Here are some temperature sensors that are placed around the system. Um, so right there we have the, uh, the discharge temperature, the high side. Um, that's probably a few degrees above where it's going to actually condense at. So um, it's well above the temperature of the water. And then the second number there you see, 86 and a half degrees. That's after the condenser water. So it discharged some heat, raised the temperature of the water, but the refrigerant inside the line dropped in temperature. So we moved some heat from the box to the water. Uh, the third temperature is a uh, uh, heat exchanger. It's not really important for this, uh, this video. And the last temperature there, about 29 degrees Fahrenheit, is the suction temperature. So that's, that's uh, probably close to maybe a few degrees above the evaporator coil temperature right now. So for, let's say, let's, let's take a look here. 46 pounds per square inch corresponds to a boiling point of 25 degrees Fahrenheit. See, that's about 29 degrees Fahrenheit, so a few degrees above the evaporator temperature. Now that's the suction gas actually being drawn off coils going back to the compressor. So it picks up a little bit of heat in the copper on the way back, um, but uh, all in all, not too bad. So anyway, that is a refrigeration system. I try to make it as short as possible. I think this video is going to be like 20 or 25 minutes long. but. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you've watched all that, I um, apologize for some of my ramblings, but um, um, 
anyway, I just wanted to kind of go over refrigeration a little bit because it seems like a lot of my videos I'm just kind of jumping right in in the middle of it. Um, so if you don't uh, don't understand how refrigeration works, if you didn't, I hope you have a better idea now. Um, I, uh, I advise you to check out a couple of my other videos, um, uh, get a little more in depth in this. I'm going to have a lot more stuff coming up here soon. Uh, I'm going to do a complete rebuild on this thing. Um, I have a lot more temperature sensors. There's going to be some data logging involved. It's going to get a lot of fun. Um, but uh, anyway, great day.